Next, a look at the basics of organizing fire resources for representation in a patient's record. First, let's use the fire procedure resource as an example of how we might connect resources together to uh, represent a uh, use case for an individual patient. First, the uh, fire procedure resource would include the identity of the procedure, who performed it, and when, and that procedure would reference the patient who's the subject of the procedure, the condition that's the reason for the procedure being performed, the encounter within which the procedure was performed, the practitioner who performed the procedure, and a diagnostic report that would occur as a result of the procedure, all of those being separate to fire resources that are linked to the procedure resource by server references. So there are a number of fire resources that are used to represent or organize the fire data that's part of a use case. Examples are the list resource, which might be a medication list, problem list, allergy list, a past medical history, which we think of as a list of past conditions or procedures in a patient's history, a past social history or current social history that both represent different lists, and these list resources would be used as a way of organizing data within a document or for exchange. That exchange often takes place as a fire bundle. The bundle resource is a way to identify a group of fire resources that are related in some way, either as a list or document or perhaps a laboratory test result. The fire composition resource is used to identify the structure and format of a document that contains fire resources as the data for that document. So as an example of a fire document, consider this brief representation of two office encounters, one when a 12-year-old child presents to a physician with pain in the right ear for three days, and an elevated temperature, the pain in the right ear being a condition that is being asserted by the patient, and the elevated temperature and observation made by the patient. In the clinic, the patient's found to have an elevated temperature of 38 degrees, and that is a observation asserted by the practitioner. There is also an observation of an inflamed right eardrum, and the patient is prescribed amoxicillin, which would be represented by the fire medication resource. Two days later, the patient returns to the same clinic with an itchy skin rash, determined to be a result of an allergic reaction to the amoxicillin. The patient is given an alternative prescription for erythromycin. So if we look at those different fire resources from those two encounters, we could diagram it in this manner, where the patient and the practitioner are the same for both of the encounters. There are separate observation resources. There is an allergy resource representing the penicillin allergy. All of those resources are referenced to the appropriate encounter and could be sent as a bundle to represent a document and would include a composition resource that would specify the way the data is arranged in that document. In the course of clinical care, it's expected that documents will be signed or attested to by a practitioner who created the document, in this case the uh, physician, so that bundle representing the document can be signed or attested to, just as you might uh, with a CDA document, and then that bundle could be exchanged with another uh, system or stored in a fire repository. There are two other very important organizing resources, one of which is the questionnaire resource and the related 
questionnaire response. Many things in healthcare can be thought of as a questionnaire or a form covering a broad range from past medical history to uh, public health case reports, social history, research questionnaires in the uh, course of clinical research, quality and evaluation forms, patient intake forms, forms for insurance claims, and there are certainly questionnaires or forms that are actually completed by the practitioner, not by the patient. These would include procedure reports. All of these different use cases can use the questionnaire resource to represent the items, the questions in the questionnaire, which may be uh, simply a flat series of questions, but the FIRE questionnaire resource also enables branching logic so that if the answer to question three is no, you go to question six and so on. So the questionnaire resource is not specific to a patient. It's actually referred to as a definitional resource in FIRE. So in other words, the same questionnaire resource would be used by many different uh, patients or practitioners. However, the questionnaire response resource that is exactly what it sounds, the results of that questionnaire is specific to the individual who completed the questionnaire and is then a bundle of FIRE resources. So that questionnaire response might be stored in a FIRE server where the responses could be retrieved or subject to analytics for a population of patients. I would consider the FIRE questionnaire and questionnaire response resources as among the most valuable and usable entry points for adopting FIRE. Creating a questionnaire does not require a full knowledge of FIRE nor of healthcare data or interoperability. Designing a questionnaire might only require being familiar with your own work area and some of the data needs or workflow needs in that work area that could be supported by a questionnaire or form. So I would think of the questionnaire as enabling innovation by many different individuals in healthcare, regardless of what their role is, as long as they're able to describe the need in their work area and the data that would be involved. They do not necessarily have to know the specifics of interoperability, since many questionnaires would be used locally and could be the entry point to more uh, complex fire use cases for someone who's learning about fire.